Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a beam for torsion. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design the torsional reinforcement in a rectangular beam 350 mm wide. The breadth is given as 350 mm and 750 mm deep. The overall depth D is given as 700 mm. Let us assume that the effective cover D is 50 mm. So the effective depth D will be 700 minus 50. We will get 650 mm subjected to an ultimate twisting movement of 140 kN m. The torsional movement is 140 combined with an ultimate bending movement of 200 kN m. The ultimate bending movement is 200 and ultimate shear force of 110 kN. The ultimate shear force is 110. Use M25 concrete and steel FE 415. FCK is 25 and FI is 415. The first step in the design is to find the bending movements for design. In the IS 456 code book, we have to open page number 75. We need to find the moment mt. Using this formula, we can find that after applying all of the values for mt, we will get this. The ultimate moment mu is given in the question as 200. mt is greater than mu. In this case, we have to design a doubly reinforced section. We need to find equivalent bending moment me1 using this formula. For ME1, we will get 447.06. This moment should be considered in the tension, that is in the bottom of the beam. Then using this formula, we need to find the equivalent moment ME2. For that, we will get 47.06. This moment is in the compression zone, that is at the top of the beam. Now we are going to find the area of the steel in tension. In the code book, from the page number 96, we have to copy this formula. In the formula for MU, we have to apply ME1. We have to apply that in Newton millimeter, so that we have to multiply that with 10 power 6. Finally, we will get this equation. Using a calculator, we can solve the equation. For AST, we will get this. Alternatively, we can find AST using a formula. If you can memorize this formula, you can get AST directly. We can apply all of the values. Finally, for AST, we will get this. Randomly, let us try with the four numbers of 25 mm diameter bars. So the AST will be 2463. We have to make it sure that the provided AST is more than the required AST. Now we are going to find the area of the steel in compression. For MU, we have to apply ME2. After applying all of the values, we will get this equation. Using the calculator for AST, we will get this. Alternatively, using this formula, we will get AST. Let us use the two numbers of 16 mm diameter bars. So the provided AST will be 402 mm square. Now we are going to provide the torsional reinforcement. In the code book, we have to open the page number 47. When the cross-sectional dimension of the member exceeds 450 mm, additional longitudinal bars shall be provided. The overall depth D is 700 mm. It is more than 450 mm. So that we have to provide additional rebars. The requirements of minimum reinforcement is given in the section. 26.5.1.3 which is also in the page number 47. The total area of such a reinforcement shall not be less than 0.1%. Let us keep the reinforcement as 0.1% but we have to provide on both of the sides. So on one side it will be 0.1 upon 2. So we will get 0 0.05. So the area will be 0.05 upon 100 into B into the overall depth D, we will get 122.5 mm square. 
we can try with the two numbers of 10 millimeter diameter bars we will get the area as 157 so let us provide two numbers of 10 millimeter diameter bars on each side now we are going to check whether shear design is required from the page number 75 we can copy this formula ve is the equivalent to shear using the formula for ve we will get a 750 kN now from the page number 72 we can copy this formula in the formula instead of tau v we have to use the term tau ve and instead of vu we have to apply ve for tau ve we will get 3.3 using this formula we can find the percentage of steel in the tension the provided ast is 2463 millimeter square for pt we will get 1.08 now we have to open the page number 73 our 100 ast upon pd is 1.08 it comes between 1 and 1.25 our fck is 25 so we have to copy these two values we need to find the tau c for 1.08 we can do interpolation this value plus this minus this upon this minus this into this minus this we will get tau c for 1.08 or 0 0.66 tau ve is greater than tau c in this case we have to provide shear reinforcement let us provide two liquid stirrups at 10 millimeter diameter so the area of the vertical stirrups will be 157 millimeter square now we are going to find the spacing of the stirrups in the code book we have to open the page number 47 we have to copy this formula from these two terms we can take sv upon 0.87 fy outside we can take this term on the other side it will come in the numerator we can also take this term on the other side it will come in the denominator let us see what is b1 and d1 B1 is the center to center distance between corner bars in the direction of the width. D1 is the center to center distance between corner bars in the direction of depth. Let us find B1 that is the center to center distance of the corner bars along the breadth. We know that the effective cover is 50. So to get B1 from the breadth we have to subtract 2 into 50. So that we will get 250 millimeter now let us find d1 that is the distance of center to center of the corner repass along the depth we know that the effective cover is 50 so to get d1 from d we have to subtract 2 into 50 for d1 we will get 600 millimeter in this formula let us apply all of the values for SV, we will get 56 millimeter. Then we have to copy this formula. We can arrange the formula like this. One more time, we have to find the spacing. In the formula, after applying all of the values, for the spacing, we will get 61.34. In the previous step, we have got 56. From these two, we have to select the minimum value, which is 56 millimeter. Now we have to apply the check for spacing. The spacing shall not exceed the list of x1, x1 plus y1 upon 4 and 300 millimeter. This is the spacing we have just before calculated. So for the spacing from these 4, we have to select the minimum value. Let us find the x1 that is the center to center distance of stirrup along the breadth. To find x1 with the b1, we have to add these two distances. This distance will be half diameter of the tension rebar. So 25 by 2 plus half diameter of stirrups bar. So 10 by 2. In the same way, this distance will be 25 upon 2 plus 10 by 2. 25 upon 2 plus 25 upon 2, it is 25. 10 upon 2 plus 10 upon 2 it is 10 when we add these three we will get x1 as 285 millimeter 
In the similar way, to find y1 with d1, we have to add these two distances. This distance will be half diameter of the tension rebar, so 25 upon 2 plus the stirrup diameter upon 2, so 10 by 2. And this distance is the half diameter in the compression reinforcement, so that will be 16 upon 2 plus the half diameter of the stirrup bar, so 10 by 2. 10 by 2 plus 10 by 2, it will be 10. 25 upon 2, it will be 12.5. And 16 upon 2, it will be 8. For Y1, we will get 630.5 millimeter. X1 is 285. For X1 plus Y1 upon 4, we will get 228.8. Out of these 4, we have to take the minimum value. 56 is the minimum one. Let us round that to 50. So let us provide two legged 10 millimeter diameter stirrups at the spacing of 50 millimeter. Here you can see the reinforcement details. We have provided four numbers of 25 millimeter diameter bars in the tension zone and two numbers of 16 millimeter diameter bars in the compression zone. We have given two numbers of 10 millimeter diameter bars on both of the sides for the torsion and we have provided two liquid stirrups at 10 millimeter diameter at the spacing of 50 millimeter now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video